All right. All right. Well, I think we're at the top of the hour. So uh, welcome, everyone. Good to see you all. Um, let me drop. Let's see if I can do this. <laughs> Genevieve, would you mind dropping the link um, to the agenda into the chat? It's a little I'm not very agile at presenting <laughs> my screen and doing that. There we go. Thank you. So um, yeah, if, if there's the agenda. And if you want to just follow along and at the bottom of that document, you can go ahead and sign in so we can track who's attending. That would be great. Um, so my name is Emily Breaker, and I am a co-chair of Best Practices Committee, along with Genevieve Tachi, my fellow co-chair. And um, to start us off, we thought we would just present just a really brief introduction to the committee, especially for those of you who are joining us for the first time. And then we'll summarize some of our committee activities and progress uh, over the last committee year before we get into discussing our um, what we'd like to focus on and goals for the next year. So let's see, kind of just to situate us, uh, we wanted to provide a basic definition of best practices that we use for our committee. So best practices are defined as commendable actions and philosophies that successfully solve problems, can be replicated and demonstrate an awareness of professional standards. Um, and so rather than strict, hard and fast rules, best practices are really widely accepted recommendations that reliably lead to expected results, but they don't necessarily remain static. And so our work as a committee is really to keep up with changes and adapt our practices as we encounter um, new collection types, new materials, uh, new information and develop new technologies in the field. And this really largely uh, revolves around gathering best practice recommendations relating to natural history collections and presenting this content to the spinach committee community and beyond. Um, and we do that in a variety of ways. Oops, sorry. Um, so we do that through the spinach wiki, a Zotero citation library, collaborating with other organizations such as AIC uh, to develop community wide best practices and through workshops, particularly at annual meetings. So um, really seeking out relevant platforms and building infrastructure to kind of disseminate and discuss best practices are major objectives of the committee. And we always welcome your input on ways to expand our reach and to really deepen our knowledge on uh, relevant best practice topics. Um, any questions so far on just kind of the basic structure and framework of the committee? Okay, how many people do we have here? We we're hoping to do um, introductions. Let's see, I think we, that's doable. Um, so I'll go ahead and start. Um, my name is Emily Breaker again, and uh, I am the vertebrate collections manager at the University of Colorado Museum of Natural History. And I, this is my second year as co-chair and leading up to co-chair, I was on the committee for seven years. Um, and yeah, my dream is to see a really robust wiki with lots of pages uh, constantly updated and added to. And I really enjoy learning about best practices, especially, um, especially where they overlap within, uh, among different disciplines. So I'll pass it on to Genevieve. Hi, I'm Genevieve Tachi. I'm at the Harvard University Herbaria. Um, and I'm the other best practices co-chair. Emily, should we unshare the screen for this so everyone can see? Sure, uh, yeah. Because the plan is to kind of popcorn this. So if you're unfamiliar with popcorning, it's where we're then gonna pass it to somebody else and then you'll pick another name and then we'll all learn each other's names and get to hear what's going on. Um, best practices is super fun from my standpoint because I've lived in the herbarium world for a long time, but it turns out that all natural history has a lot of common threads and we can end up in our own bubbles. And that's what I love about the wiki is that we're trying to make sure that all this information gets cross-pollinated because it turns out we can all learn a lot from each other and from the community at large. So it's been a lot of fun to work with Emily and all of you this past year to really gather and think about things in new ways um, to get information out there. So I will pass it to Dirk. Uh, 
sorry for being slow. Um, yeah, I've been working together with Anya, who's also there, um, trying to digest some of the information that we have to update the shipping um, pages of um, the wiki website. Um, we did a brief update this year, um, more to come, hopefully in summer. Um, we are a little bit behind with what we wanted to do, but we want to have that updated soon. And then you just got to pick someone to pass it to, Dark. Take Anya as the next one. Hi, my name is Anya. Um, I'm working in Berlin in the Natural History Museum, and I'm doing some things together with Dirk. But I'm also one of the responsible person for collection management in Berlin, and I'm doing a lot with jars, wilds, so everything made of glass here in Europe to, to do it in the same way in this museum. So, yeah, what should I say more? <laughs> and maybe I can hand over to Carrie Eaton. My name is Carrie Eaton, and I'm the curator at the University of Wisconsin Geology Museum. Um, my background is actually in quaternary geology and quaternary mammals. Um, but as a curator of a whole geology collection, we have everything from minerals and meteorites to invert paleo to vert paleo. And so in joining um, best practices, um, I really wanted to reach out to some of the other geology minded folk out there that, because there aren't a lot of us, um, but there also aren't a lot of geological curation resources out there. I mean, I can kind of think of two on the top, off the top of my head that are sort of the standards. Um, and that's, that's really kind of the, the basics of what's available. Um, we are in the middle of, no, nothing quite helps your productivity like a pandemic and a collections facility renovation. <laughs> So um, I have been in person at work, lifting and moving, and we, we basically moved our whole facility with like just two people. So I've been just putting out a blanket apology to anyone who's attempted to email me in the last 10 months. Sorry, I'll get back to you eventually. <laughs> but we're, we're in like the final throes of moving stuff back in. I got through the Cretaceous yesterday. Um, that was pretty exciting to finish that off. And keep moving up section. Um, so I will pass it to my paleo minded friend, Paul. Hello, I'm Paul Mayer from the Field Museum. I'm the collections manager for fossil invertebrates and I work on Devonian brachiopods and conodons, Silurian reefs, and of course, Maison Creek and uh, the Tully Monster. And I guess I just have a general interest in the, the best practice committee and always interested to hear uh, anything new, especially with geology stuff, because we always get uh, questions from um, the exhibit folks on what kind of conditions should these be uh, displayed at. And, and a lot of times with, with the Silurian stuff, it's dolomite. So you'd, you'd be hard pressed to uh, ruin it unless you really put it in some acid or something. <laughs> and then it would have to be strong acid too at the boot. Um, <laughs> But there we go, I'll pass it to Brita because she's right next to me. Hi, I'm Brita Zimkis. I'm the Assistant Director of Collections Operations at the Museum of Comparative Zoology. Uh, specifically, one of my jobs is running our cryo collection. Um, I'm very happy to see the Best Practices Committee moving forward. Uh, Jessica Kunduf and I were co-chairs for five years and we're excited to see where it goes. Uh, I'm currently a member at large as, as well and working with Paul on some issues related to theft and security of collections. And I will pass to Jessica. I'm Jessica Cundiff. I am the curatorial associate for an invertebrate paleontology at the MCZ. Uh, so one of the things I'm currently working on is Carrie had sent me some stuff she had put together for shipping large fossils. So I am adding 
um, info from my um, experience. And I hope that that's something that I can finish up soon. And if Carrie has time to take a quick look and then we can get it up on the wiki. Uh, so I will pass to my MCZ colleague, Christina Bird, who is in vertebrate paleontology. Hi everyone, I'm Christina Bird, Curatorial Associate for Vertebrate Paleontology um, at the Museum of Comparative Zoology. And I actually look forward to working more with uh, my fellow VP folks and Carrie to work on VP best practices and geology best practices. In my past experience with museums, I took care of a geology collection as well and deeply considered best practices on how to take care of that collection um, during my time at that museum. So I will popcorn to, uh, let's just keep the MCZ track, uh, Ava. There we go. Hi, I'm Ava Biedrin. I'm a curatorial assistant at the Museum of Comparative Zoology in both the invertebrate and vertebrate paleontology departments. Um, I'm here because I'm interested both in expanding my own knowledge of best practices in relation to vertebrate paleo and invert paleo collections. But I'm also interested in understanding, as Genevieve says, how cross-pollination between different disciplines um, in collection management can improve all our best practices. So I'm really looking forward to learning from everybody here today. And I will popcorn it to, uh, how about Randall Singer? We can't hear you, Randy. Oh, I forgot. I, I double muted because I have kids around. So um, my name is Randy Singer. I'm from the University of Michigan Museum of Zoology. I work in the fish division. I love best practices. And this is the best committee in spinach. And I look forward to uh, every year meeting with you guys and talking about the best uh, and newest ways of keeping our collections bright and up to date. Um, I will pass it over to my homie, Greg Watkins Colwell. That's funny. I, I kind of feared you would. <laughs> um, I'm Greg Watkins Colwell. I'm the collection manager of ichthyology and herpetology at Yale Peabody Museum of Natural History. Uh, right now, the museum is in the midst of a major renovation. The entire galleries are gutted. There are walls knocked down. Um, there are there's dust everywhere and smack in the middle of the construction zone is our cryo facility, uh, which is untouched, but um, is dusty and I have to put on a hard hat to go get tissue samples and that's fun. So um, we're working out what best practices are in a construction zone. And I'm gonna popcorn to Shelly James, who are you? Well, let me tell you, I am Shelly James. Um, I'm the collections manager of the Western Australian Herbarium. I'm a member at large with Spinach. Um, you'll have to forgive me. I probably won't participate much seeing as I've now done a 14 and a half hour day. Um, and uh, part of the problem with me participating in this group is that uh, I'm on the other side of the world. And so it's very difficult for me to come to meetings as much as I would really love to. Um, but I am here today to see what uh, everyone's been up to and I'm um, looking forward to catching up with everyone. Oh, popcorning it. Oh, who haven't? Jules, off to you, mate. Uh, thanks, Shelley. Uh, I'm Jules Carter, uh, currently president elect of this esteemed society. And uh, I work as a natural science conservator at the National Museum in Wales and uh, have quite a lot to do with best practice for many years, been delving into pickle things and God knows what. And a couple of my co conspirators in that project are here on this feed now, such as Dirk and Andy's been involved, and uh, a certain dodgy character called John Simmons as well. We might even have a book out soon, mightn't we, Dirk? Who knows? Nice to meet you all. Sorry, got to popcorn. Who should we have? Uh, Margaret. I'm Margaret Landis. I'm the collection manager of paleobotany, micropaleontology, and mineralogy at the Sam Noble Museum. 
And I've been helping out with citations for, I don't remember how many years, but too many to count. And let's go to Andy. Hey everyone, Andy Bentley from the University of Kansas Biodiversity Institute. Um, I'm a past president of Spinach um, and have been working on the Shipping of Dangerous Goods wiki page. I'm trying to keep that updated and will uh, continue to do so. Um, and I'm gonna pass it off to somebody that I don't know. Um, how about Stevie Kennedy Gold? Um, oops, there we go, let me get my video up, sorry folks. Um, hi there, I'm Stevie Kennedy Gold. I'm the collection manager in the section of herpetology at the Carnegie Museum of Natural History and a bit of a fledgling with spinach. So wanting to get involved in committees and best practices particularly since there's a lot of good stuff hopefully to bring from you folks to the museum. So interested in getting to know what we have to talk about. So I'll pass it on to, let's see, Amanda. I don't, I don't think you've spoken yet. I have not. Um, my name's Amanda Melhouse. I manage the vertebrate paleontology collections at Smithsonian National Museum of Natural History. Um, I do a lot of digitization work with our fossil collections, specifically in VP. And um, I'm doing a lot to update our VP data standards and everything else. So um, as that gets along, I'll be working with my other paleo co-conspirators, paleo and geological co-conspirators on some other things as that gets developed. Um, so yeah, and I will pass it off to Erica. Hi, I'm Erica Krimmel. I'm the digitization resources coordinator for IDAG Bio at Florida State University. And I think I would like to, you know, do what we can to help facilitate um, sharing best practices, especially related to digitization. And I will pass it off to Anya. I don't think you've spoken yet. Or you have? Okay. Then I'll pass it off to uh, Laura Rincon. Hi, uh, my name is Laura Rincon. Uh, I'm doing my master in museum studies at the University of Florida in Gainesville. Um, and right now I'm doing my thesis about how to become natural history collections in uh, active, inclusive, diverse, and inclusive space for everybody. Uh, and I'm using the ichthyology collection uh, as my case of study and also a book that is titled Active Collections. And, and also maybe you have seen my uh, emails about my club. I have a collection sleep club where we have discussions every month about collections. Now I stop to do it because I, I will change. Uh, I will be working jointly with a ICOM com call. Um, yeah, uh, so this is my, my first time in the committee for Randy's recommendation. <laughs> um, this is my second time in the conference, so I'm here for here and, and learn new things. <laughs> um, I will pass the mic to Luz, Luz Miriam. Hi. Hello. I am the manager collection of um, entomology collection of uh, Tecnologico Antioquia. It's located in Medellin, Colombia. This is my first time in, in this um, society. And I am here for, to learn about everything to apply to my collection. I pass the chance to, I don't know, uh, Dan Young. Hi, everyone. I'm Dan Young. I am the director of the University of Wisconsin Madison uh, Entomological Research Collection, just uh, toward University Bay from where Carrie resides uh, with geology. And like Carrie, we are in the midst of a massive renovation of our collections as well. So I guess it's something to do during a pandemic since all of our grants are sort of on hold. Um, let's see, I'm also the liaison with, between Spinach and the Entomological Collections Network, ECN. 
I've been sort of a peripheral member of best practices for quite a while, and it's good to see some other entomology types joining our group. So maybe we can get together and work on some best entomological practices. And staying with the entomologist, I'll pass to Tommy McElrath from down the road at Illinois. Oh, I knew you were going to do that, Dan. <clears throat> um, my name is Tommy McElrath. I'm the uh, collect insect collections manager here at the Illinois Natural History Survey um, and got involved in best practices uh, last year when we started a digitization uh, archiving thing called bug flow um, uh, sort of involved with IDIG bio uh, or involved with IDIG bio not sort of involved with IDIG bio but um, we started realizing we're going to need a lot of uh, best practices pages to link to on our digitization sort of archiving and collective thing. Um, you can learn more about that bug flow project at during the spinach meeting. Uh, we've got a talk on June 1st, I think. Can't remember. It's so hard to remember the dates with the talks being as spread out as they are. Um, but uh, yeah, looking to get more entomology best practices stuff done, although we're trying to finish the bug flow thing first and we'll do the best practices stuff later, but I'm keeping in touch with all the other best practices people while we're doing that. So. Um, I will popcorn to uh, Andy Bentley. Have you gone yet? He has, okay. Uh, uh, Jennifer Trimble, I don't know you, so. She actually- oh, Hey everyone. Uh, if you can hear me, I can, I can speak. Um, but I am a uh, curatorial assistant in the Department of Invertebrate Zoology and Malacology at the Museum of Comparative Zoology in Cambridge. And I know both our departments have taken to heart a lot of the best practices that have been implemented and recommended by this committee, but I definitely know we have a long way to go and places to improve our collections. So I'm hoping to learn a lot here and contribute what I can as well. Oh yeah, and popcorn too. Let's see. Carrie Eaton, have you gone? You did. <laughs> uh, let's see. Who has not gone? Popcorn to who hasn't gone and no, they haven't gone. <laughs> Raise your hand if you haven't gone. <laughs> um, I don't think we've heard from Adam yet. Okay, I'll, uh, I guess I'll self nominate. Uh, hi, my name is Adam Kowalczyk. Um, I'm a collections operations assistant at the Museum of Comparative Zoology. Um, I used to work in uh, vertebrate paleontology um, and I'm now working uh, mostly in the invertebrate paleontology collection. Um, I'm looking to kind of learn more about best practices in different collections and learn about the developments of new practices with the implementations of different technology um, and stuff like that. So I'm going to go ahead and popcorn to uh, Mariko. Hi, my name is Mariko Kageyama from Seattle. I've been a member of the spinach since around 2002, but I, uh, I, was in the hiatus for the uh, past four or five years. Uh, uh, I was so busy as a law student and to pass the bar exam, but uh, I'm very happy to be back uh, as a lawyer and consultant. At the, I work at the Kano L. Gates in Seattle, and my in interest is on general legal issues in uh, scientific research, including Nagoya Protocol. So I'm going to popcorn it next, Diana. Or if she's not there, then Nicole. Hello. Uh, do you hear me? Yep. We can hear you. Okay. Hello, my name is Diana. I'm. Um, PhD prospective student at the University of Atanavi. I just graduated from uh, uh, PEC uh, in 2020 
in paleontological collection and uh, conservation. And I'm interested in um, Stetaceaean and uh, Hippopotam. Um, uh, I'm interested in um, fossil digitizations too, and your uh, virtual museum. And uh, I look forward. I look forward for it. Yes, I think that's all. Uh, I will pass it to Andy Bentley. I think Andy's gone, but I think Fedor has not. Oh yeah, okay. hi. So, Nicole Sweden. Yeah, my name is Fedor Alexander Stamen, and I uh, work at the uh, for the as a data coordinator for the National Natural uh, the National Museum of uh, the Natural History Museum of Denmark. Um, so I've only been working for a bit over a year, uh, and we've got a long way to go just harmonizing across the different collections how we digitize uh, uh, stuff and how we put it into system. We are using the uh, specify uh, collections management software. And um, yeah, we have been... Um, We've been undermanned uh, at the data office, and uh, I, I have not met had enough time and manpower to kind of get this thing going. But I would love to hear more about best practices. In any case, I have a background in paleontology, by the way. Thank you, Andy. Um, looks like Magdalena has her hand raised. Yeah. So I guess uh, Magdalena then. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Hi there. Um, my name is Magdalena and I'm a paper conservator. I'm a teaching and research assistant at the Academy of Fine Arts in Warsaw, Poland. And I'm dealing with historic herbaria. So I'm dealing with treatment and technical analysis, non-destructive and destructive analysis. Recently, I added two pages to Wiki about pesticides and adhesives. And I hope to add more. I joined... Um, Best practices committee, I think it was six or seven years ago. And I hope to contribute and add some of my conservation, paper conservation knowledge. I'm also completing PhD on conservation treatment of historic herbaria and impact of adhesives and um, specimens DNA. So um, I hope to complete the project soon and submit it for, uh, for the review. So I hope to uh, contribute more to, to the wiki. Thank you. And I can pop on to Carol. Yes, hi, I'm Carol Kelloff. I work at the uh, Botany Department at the Smithsonian Institution. I kind of have several hats, but I think right now I'm a curatorial assistant and research botanist. Um, the Smithsonian or the herbarium is in a major overhaul of uh, converting the whole herbarium and shifting it to the APG4 system. Um, unfortunately, we are way behind the curve now because of COVID, but uh, recently we lost two of our Asteraceae curators, so it kind of falls to me to take care of the Asteraceae now. Um, I'm also the spinach archivist, along with uh, Megan Toner and Lisa Palmer. So just thought I'd give a shout out to them. And um, let's see, and I'll popcorn, uh, Nicole. Hi, my name is Nicole Seiden. I go by Nikki. Um, I was just hired on here at Harbor Branch Oceanographic Institute as a research collections manager. And I'm currently working on reorganizing the entire collections. We're moving from phylogenetic to um, jar sizes. So that's a, a very fun and interesting project, but we're also getting ready to digitize our full collections. So I was just hired last month um, and I'm also a recent graduate. So I'm very interested in best practices, uh, both with photography, digitizing, and just general care, specifically of fluid preserved specimens. So thanks for having me. Thanks. I think that's everyone. If not, please let us know. Did, did Jessica talk? 
kind of yeah okay good cool well, thanks everyone so um let me share my screen again um so great to hear from you all and see how many disciplines we have represented so i'm just gonna kind of quickly go through what we've been we've kind of completed over the last year and then we'll get into talking about this coming year um so just starting with the spinach wiki uh, which can be accessed through the main spinach website or through the url here we worked on several enhancements to the resource um, so the first was adding the search matrix to the main landing page so we wanted users to be able to more easily navigate the wiki and before there was kind of a simple keyword search box and a text box that highlighted recently added um, wiki pages but we thought that sort of categorizing all pages into topic areas would be a helpful entry point to explore the wiki and let people really browse different topics um, and find what they're looking for. So each of these category tiles can be clicked and then call up all the relevant wiki pages pertaining to that topic of interest. And so creating this matrix meant really going through each wiki page and tagging it uh, with the topic categories. And a lot of pages got tagged in multiple ways. Um, and so for instance, something like the loan wiki page would be tagged under both collections transactions as well as uh, collection management policies. So for any of you working on wiki pages, uh, be sure to tag them using these provided topic areas. Um, if there is a new topic area that you think we should add, uh, let us know and we can talk about that. We had several new pages added to the wiki over the last year, as many of you mentioned, um, as well as a lot of pages that received major updates. So thank you all so much for uh, those of you who authored or edited content. And let me get my list here. That was Andy Bentley, Jessica Cundiff, Carrie Eaton, Magdalena Grenda Kermano, Mariko Kageyama, Elizabeth Leith, Dirk Newman, Genevieve Tachi, Jennifer Trimble, and myself. Uh, another wiki-related project completed this last year was a retro capture of the uh, spinach posters from the 2019 Chicago meeting. So after we had our virtual meeting last year where we publish conference posters directly to the wiki. We thought it'd be possible to reach out to poster authors from previous conference years to provide a digital copy of their poster. And um, several authors from the 2019 meeting were willing to share. So um, they are, posters are now up on the wiki serving as sort of a perpetual resource. Um, this year I did come through the program and I will do it again, but there don't seem to be a lot of uh, spinach related posters or even natural history uh, related posters, um, but certainly moving forward for future conference years, we will maintain space for posters and work with conference organizers to post future conference posters. And then um, last wiki update is that we have several sections from the recently published Preventive Conservation Collection Storage book that um, Rachel Perkins Ehrenstein, who is not here today, has worked to finalize permissions to publish choice content to the wiki. So that includes these storage at a glance sections, which are kind of one page summaries, many figures and tables and actually full chapters um, from the book. Uh, she also worked with students from the George Washington University to uh, create annotated bibliographies. And so that's all ready to go and be posted to the wiki. And we have a sign up sheet in our Teams folder, which we'll talk about how to access, um, where we are asking members to actually just post this content to the wiki. And so thanks to Rachel for her efforts on this front. And I think I'll pass to Genevieve and I can do your slides for you. Great, thanks Emily. Um, a big thing that's been worked on um, primarily by Margaret has been continuing to move our Zotero, um, our citations into the Zotero library. So they have been, I believe, in EndNote. Zotero is a free open source bibliographic tool. Um, and this way we can get multiple people helping go through and check documents that are in there that need to be checked. We're gonna work on um, streamlining our tags. So then it's easier for people to find things and also get content in. And then we're still looking for new content. Um, if you're unfamiliar with Zotero, it is one of many free 
citation software tool that works pretty well. Here's the link to our library. And we really hope to um, find a way to continue to work on this this coming year um, and take some of the work off of Margaret's shoulders because she's done so much for so long and her efforts are unparalleled. Uh, go ahead, Emily. So one of the things we talked about as a group last year and implemented was coming up with kind of teams to help us come together and work on some of the different concept areas that as a committee we felt would be nice to do going forward. And I think that some of those teams, um, Emily and I suggested after our committee meeting with all of you and some of them kind of form more organically. So um, there's a paleo digitization group and an entomology group. And those are people who are in the same field working together to generate resources, which are really amazing um, for the wiki. Um, we discussed doing things like videos. We discussed getting the posters and presentations, which everyone's done a really great job on. So these are some of the areas that we had last year that we were hoping to work on. And over the course of this past year, you can see we kind of, what we kind of focused on. Um, so, so we decided for this coming year that maybe trying to get documents from the other committees, um, if there's people that really wanna work on that, that's great, but we've been trying to reach out to committees to get their documentation up. It seems like most of the past posters and presentations are kind of done. So we're hoping this coming year that some of the areas we might try to focus on in addition to the constant wiki content that you all have and find that's amazing is to really try to get some of this information out of NH poll that we all love to read and then don't have an easy summary of. There's been some really amazing conversations this year and previous years. Um, as Emily mentioned, the collection storage book has a lot of content that's ready to go. So people, we understand everyone's tapped out. We're not upset that for people that just didn't have the bandwidth to do anything. Obviously, it's been a really hard year. Um, but if you feel like you've got a little bit of time and you don't have a lot of capacity to generate content of your own, it's really basically copying and pasting to get this collection storage book info up. And it'll be a huge boon to the community because the book is hard to get in a lot of places right now outside of the US still. Um, there's a lot of work to do on citations to help bring things up to speed so it's really easy for people to use and realize it's there. Um, in the past, we talked about creating videos um, and finding videos. So I think if there's people that are, have techniques that are hard to describe that we can really come up with content to put on our YouTube channel. And we're hoping um, to see what comes out of the entomology group and the paleo digitization group. I know paleo is really close to getting everything up and we're super excited. So that's what's going on. I forget what the next slide is. Is that it? Okay. So, so that was kind of the end of who we are and what we've been doing. And now everyone got to say hi. I know that at a normal committee meeting, we might not have a chance to go around the room like that, but I really appreciate everyone introduce themselves because we can't just walk over to each other and have a cup of coffee this year easily. Um, and there's new people and it's really, really nice to get to know you all a little bit. Um, I've dropped it in a few times. So let me drop it in one last time for the agenda in case you wanna follow along. Um, so we've gone through what um, kind of some of the teams that we have, if there are, the way we did that is we, after this meeting, everyone who's on the attendance sheet and everyone who's been a previous member, we're gonna send out a form, a Google form for you to sign up to say, yes, I definitely wanna be part of the committee again this year. And it'll give you um, areas that you can say that we've pre-selected that you can choose to decide, oh, I'd like to be on this team, or you can suggest other things, or if you've got colleagues you wanna work on stuff with, that's great. Um, and then everyone who is a member, we give access to a whole Google Drive that we have with multiple folders for teams and resources. Um, so then we can figure out and uh, facilitate any way you need to communicate. You obviously don't need to use that to work together, um, but it's a way that then 
we can make sure the content doesn't get lost. So if you do a bunch of work and then have to step away, if you could send that to us so we can get it in the Google Drive, that makes sure that um, we have that for the future if it's not done. So if people end up having additional teams or areas they'd like to work on, you can let us know here. You can let us know in the agenda. You can let us know when you fill out the form saying you want to be on the committee. Um, We'd love to think about additional ways to generate content. The wiki is excellent. Um, sometimes we get things from workshops. Back when we were doing things in person, every once in a while we do kind of like a wiki blitz or a wiki hackathon where people would say, okay, well, I kind of know about this. And we'd have people sit down right at the meeting and generate skeletal pages with information and then follow up on it. So we want to see what everyone thinks about going forward. Um, the teams, we're not sure if the teams were as useful as we were hoping. So did, did people like the teams? Did people dislike the teams? Was it just a bad year? Does anyone want to weigh in on whether they feel like teams are a bad idea going forward or that we should continue to try it um, as a way to just organize content? You raise your hand or put something in the chat about that. And if no one has any thoughts one way or the other, maybe we'll leave them. And, and if they continue to not be used, that's fine. But then Emily and I can organize kind of what things we're hoping to do. Um, it should be with the Google Drive link that I shared that anyone with the link should be able to edit. So if there's some problems, we can tweak that after. Um, so, are there any sorts of ways that we could be generating information or gathering information or other things that you would like us to be doing as a committee, right? Do we, do we wanna think about sponsoring workshops or symposia or what have you for the future, right? We've been really strongly wiki focused because it's excellent and it's an easy way to share information, but we really wanna know what all of you would like to be doing, or if you have ideas that we can work on as a group. Um, yeah, go ahead, Dirk. Um, if we are able to meet all next year in Edinburgh in person, and if there might be some opportunity to deliver, to deliver some sort of live training, it might be worth to preparing in advance to record all these nasty examples that might pop up during those trainings and to come up with an idea how to host that on the wiki page, but maybe also how to immediately digest that into text. Because the, the problem is also with the posters. Now, now we have a landing pay, place for the posters um, but that doesn't necessarily translate the content into the wiki page. So you have some, some sort of, of parallel system there and two different areas which store or provide information that are not necessarily connected. And I, I think the, the main problem is, and also with the teams is simply time and keeping people organized on a topic. And I think that's a problem all committees have. And unless, unless I think there is an opportunity to, to either task specific people with one small topic, um, it is difficult to, to move forward. So this is what we are seeing on different committees for a long time now. Yeah, and I think because we're all putting our personal time into this that, you know, if you, if I think if someone wants us to assign, assign them a deadline to make them feel external pressure, we can do that. But, you know, we can't, we can't really put that on people unless they ask us to fictionally assigned deadlines. But I think this year was really hard and anything we can do to help 
keep things moving forward. We'll, we'll try to work with all of you on that. Um, we did have some entire group check-ins this past year, which had some people come in. Sometimes there were updates, sometimes we had questions, sometimes we brainstormed. Um, I personally like that. So I think if people wanna continue doing that, we can do that. Um, people didn't really use Slack very much and that's okay. So after we come up with content generating, um, that was a great idea, Dirk, about the in-person workshops. We can talk, we, people can talk about how they'd actually like to communicate as a group with us all. If people have ways they do or do not want to communicate, um, that would be great to know. I know not everyone has an easy time with um, Google for whatever, for various reasons. So if we need to come up with additional platforms to get document sharing on, we can do that too. Does anyone else have content that they feel like we should try to grab up in this next year? One of the other things that we're going to be working on is trying to link individual country pages to the shipping of dangerous goods page um, to try and document um, sort of country specific problems that people are having or issues that are that people need to be aware of in shipping to to various countries. Um, I have information on Australia and and Brazil um, and Dirk has some information on the EU. Um, but if there are any others represented here who are in other countries who know of specific problems that people are having or things that people need to be aware of in terms of shipping materials in dangerous, in dangerous goods to their country, um, I would appreciate hearing about it so that we can create a page um, for that particular country associated to the dangerous goods page um, so that we can document that stuff and hopefully help people in trying to get stuff shipped um, expeditiously. And consider I to, it, yeah. yeah, we can consider to to include that when when Anya might be ready with uh, digesting the information of the shipping workshops, because then we need to reshuffle part of the text, um, simply to as it might need a slightly different structure, and then we could include specific country specific sections or either links. Yeah, I was thinking of creating individual pages for individual countries and then linking them to the main page so that you can click on it and go to information about that particular country. It might be worth to link specific documents that are needed or information. So if these are available, but the, the point there is we need some sort of monitoring then that this information doesn't get outdated because that is the problem if you, if you link documents rather than um, provide links to the specific websites of governments. And Shelly is already <laughs> watching, but um, herbarium specimens to Australia, surely an issue. Yeah, well, links break just like documents do. So yeah, it's, but then, it's, a, it's a bit of a catch-22. Yeah, but with documents, you may have some sort of responsibility because you're offering information that might be outdated and the link, it just shows you that the link is broken. I think either way, if we get it up there, that's a start, right? And I think that anything we do with these pages should have built in histories. But if people don't know that, I think for these pages specifically, especially for subsections, if the people who are working on it are willing to if they could date when they do it so it was last updated so then at least people will know what sort of time frame we're talking about that could be really helpful um and in addition to the hazardous goods um i think there's been some talk about just general shipping practices which is was part of the australia herbarium specimen problems because those weren't hazardous specimens those were just specimens um and that there's lots of countries now have um, quarantine protocols that people may not be aware of. Um, I've noticed that in my community, people that have just been shipping for a really long time, especially in botany, which has had less rules than a lot of zoology, just like throw their old school stamp that they've had for 50 years that says, you know, dried botanical material, good to go. And they don't actually read up on things. So I think if we've got a place to point that even just says like, you need to go check with this country as much as that sounds really basic, um, that the, the group actually needs it. So it may be 
to dovetail with your excellent hazardous shipping, we can come up with some basic shipping. I know that I, I want entomology pin specimen shipping. I found a blog post that I personally use, but maybe we can, we can find some of the stuff that a lot of us may consider the basics, but that isn't easy to find to add to your stuff. This is what I meant with restructuring that site because at the moment it's difficult to plunge more information in because it's specific on dangerous goods and there is so much more out there. Well, I think that's great and we can we can maybe figure it out or that other one can figure it out off the wiki and then figure out maybe like a reorg for the wiki because it's super hard to organize on a wiki when you've got that volume of content. but. It's a great idea to everyone. And thanks, Andy, for helping with all that. Well, maybe what we need is we need an Uber page above the, the shipping dangerous goods page. We just need a general shipping page that can then link to all of the different kinds of shipping and then sort of link off from there. And maybe we need to link all of the country specific stuff to the shipping page rather than the dangerous goods page. Yeah, I think that sounds good. It's like the life cycle of the wiki is like there's kernel information and then it gets so big that then you kind of have to spoke off. So it's probably that time for a new landing page. Maybe some more new content, Mr. Carter. Next year in, in Edinburgh, hopefully we will have some, some news on best practice on for fluid collections. Um, and maybe that might be also something that might be worth digesting at least to some level. Yeah, agreed. Uh, once we've got this project out of the way, we could probably look at how that gets fed into the wider community. Yeah. Hopefully you have the book published by the end of this year. That's the plan at the moment. Um, manuscripts have gone in, getting funding costs at the moment, and I'm sure once that book's done, we can look at how that could be incorporated into more accessible documents in some way. And I'm sure there's lots of younger and brighter people like to get involved in some of this stuff as well. Are there any other major content areas or concepts or output that anyone wants to suggest or say they wish we did or wants to say they hope to work on and want some help with? So Maybe. real quick, uh, sorry, can I add? Okay, cool. No, no. Um, so I sort of mentioned this before. Um, uh, we're, we're sort of tentatively, like I, like I mentioned before, um, we did contact the best practices committee last year to get started with entomology specific stuff on the wiki. Um, but we basically everyone who's doing this bug flow project is just busy enough that they can even have any time to work on the bug flow project. Um, and so we've been trying to get to the best practices stuff for about a year now um, and haven't really gotten there yet. So um, this is just kind of an open call for anyone who's interested in contributing entomology stuff uh, to contact me. Um, my email's in the, I don't know if my email's in the group notes, but I'll put it in there or in the agenda notes, but I'll put it in there. Um, and if you're interested in helping out with that, let me know. Um, we have a bunch of ideas and we have a bunch of resources that we'd like to put on there, but we just don't have the time yet, <laughs> um, as I'm sure is familiar to everyone. So um, if you're interested in helping out with that, let me know. Or if you know of people you think might be interested in helping out with that, let me know. Um, we are also going to be talking about that with the Entomological Collections Network and um, in the future, but we don't have a lot of critical mass to start the best practices wing of this yet, but we are moving in that direction. And if you're interested, just let me know and we'll keep you in the loop. So. Um, on a separate note, one thing that has worked for us in the bug flow thing is to have um, bi-weekly, and this is probably a little bit too much time, but maybe like monthly would work, um, just set aside times where we do work, where we work together. Um, basically, it's just a, we all log on to Zoom and start working on something that we said we were going to work on for an hour. Um, <clears throat> and it's worked pretty well. We've actually gotten more people to work than would have worked on stuff if they didn't have a set aside time to work on things. 
Um, so that's an idea just to throw out there. Um, I don't know if that might work. That's great. Shelly, did you have anything else you wanted to say? Well, I was just gonna, is there, um, not that I'm advocating that I do this because I can't, um, is there um, best practices for pandemics for collections? I wonder I if that's something. something I wrote happy. something last year about um, continuity of operations and that is a page mm. on the wiki. Um, Maybe we need to advertise it or, or tag it as something related to pandemics. Um, hmm. Emily, don't be, feel free to work your magic. There should be a lot of written stuff and regulations how to behave in such, such a situation because a lot of institutions develop such plans. Hmm. So maybe it might be worth um, calling for some copies and digesting that. Yeah, and then linking out to um, uh, what's the Canadian site? Sorry, my brain's frying. Um, that did all the testing on different um, um, types of uh, paper uh, and plastics and whatever else. Um, um, Canadian yeah, Institute CCI. for Conservation. Yeah. So just linking to some of that too. Yeah, they have some some information up there that was online quite early. Mm -hmm. And one thing maybe that came up during the last spinach meeting in the Latin America forum was um, Latin America. So maybe engaging with the people because they really expressed they would love to have more practical information. But that might be difficult to to get into contact with them. Yeah, you're right. We had that great symposium last year that was focused. And I think making sure we don't drop the ball on that for best practices would be good. I'm adding it to the I'm putting notes in the agenda so I don't forget because I can't have a notebook and remember while talking to you all. Um, so I think we're just about out of time here. Um, if you have more great ideas, and don't have time now or just don't want to talk to us in person because you're tired of zoom please when you get the form and you want to be on the committee just put those ideas in and we can help make sure we get people connected who want to work on things or need help finding people with their ideas and um i'll send carol a final copy of the agenda so that way we have everything in the archive and um we may reach out to see if there's other ways people want to meet or talk or work. Um, so that way we can all work together really well. I know that having punctuated events, even if not on Zoom, but even if you designate a time with a few people that you'll chat on Slack or chat on your teams or whatever, just to then kind of work for an hour and communicate, that can be really helpful. Um, and we can reach out to see if there's ways you'd like to communicate with us either more or less um, so we can all move forward. Um, this past year was really stressful, um, but the hope is that people who are on the community are contributing in some way, and that can be as little as sending us an email with some really great papers you read to people who published wiki pages that are basically full publications. So anything you do is a great help to the committee. So thank you for all your time. Emily, do you have anything you want to add? Uh, I don't think so, but yeah, thank you everyone for contributions and um, we will continue regular check in meetings. So if you have um, things you want to talk about for we're all ears and feel free to add um, any comments in the Google form there's space open text for that. <laughs>